And I'm pleased that the young people had to stay in this morning because that meant there's more of you there. And uh, so it's great to see you. Um, there's just one lesson for us really to get hold of from today's reading, as um, hopefully I'll make clear. You probably know the story quite well. Two friends of Jesus walking along the road to Emmaus. It's about seven miles from Jerusalem. We're only told the name of one of them, Cleopas, uh, but it's generally thought that actually they were husband and wife. And as they walk, they're talking. They're completely shocked um, by what's happened in the last few days in Jerusalem. Their friend, the Lord Jesus, who they thought was going to be Messiah, has been put to death. Just a week ago, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey um, to a huge welcome, people waving their palm uh, waves and fronds, palm fronds and putting clothes on the road and, uh, uh, and the whole town, the whole city was uh, in an uproar. He'd been healing people everywhere. How could the Jewish authorities have condemned him to death? And then this morning, that morning, they'd been very puzzled to hear that the tomb where Jesus' body had been placed was empty. And some women said they'd seen angels who said he was alive. And as they talk, Cleopas and his wife, a stranger comes and walks along beside them along the road. And they're a bit surprised to find that he doesn't seem to know what's happened. What happened, he said, in these last few days? So they tell him everything. And then he begins to talk. He says, well, you know, if you look into the scriptures, it's all been prophesied, this, what has happened. That he would die, but that he would come back from life to death. From death to life, sorry. And uh, this would all happen. It was all prophesied. And Cleopas and his wife talk, and somehow those seven miles passed rather quickly. You know, when you're having a good conversation, you can walk for miles. The stranger says, um, well, he appears that he might walk a bit further, but then they say, no, you must come in, come in tonight, stay with us. And uh, they persuade him to come in. And as they sit down, he takes the bread and breaks it and gives thanks. And suddenly, they know it's Jesus. And if you've seen the film The Miracle Maker, you can see them laughing and crying at the same time. He's alive. And in fact, it was he who'd walked along beside them on that path to Emmaus all the time. He'd been with them. They just didn't know that. They just hadn't recognised it. He'd been there all the time. He did, they didn't feel he was there, but he was right at their side. And that's the lesson for us, really, to, to get hold of today. Because in our daily lives, there are times when we may not feel he's walking beside us. But he's actually at your elbow, my elbow. Sometimes when things are going well, it's easy to remember, you know, it feels like, well, Jesus is there, walking close beside us, and things are working out as we would like. But the real lesson is to hold on to the fact that actually he's there too, when things are not working out, when things seem to be going really wrong, and we wonder where he is. That's when we need to hold on to the promise. He said, I will be with you always. Four weeks ago, uh, Kathy and I, me particularly probably, was particularly challenged to hold on to this. We had booked uh, tickets uh, to fly to America to stay with her brother, who had just, was just about to retire. We booked the tickets in January because we reckoned he needed help to celebrate his retirement, and uh, uh, it was a return flight to fly on the 30th of March. Two days before that, on 28th, Monday morning, I got an email from American Airlines saying, uh, your flight that you thought you were on has been changed. You're not going to fly to Idaho in northwest America. You're flying to Seattle and stopping there. I thought, what? Um, and uh, 
uh, I rang up the agent, we booked it through, and uh, one of those calls, we need to have to press lots of buttons before you actually speak to someone human. And the man said, well, um, um, no, um, well, um, sort this out and come back to you in 24 to 72 hours. <laughs> oh, well, I put the phone down and started, and I thought, oh, I'm getting a bit trembly here. Um, this is all going wrong. I phoned again and uh, pressed more buttons and a voice said, if you have already talked to us about this, press this number. So I did, and a voice said, we're dealing with this, end of call. <laughs> so I tried again and another got through to someone else again by several you know, minutes because it takes so long. And uh, by this point, I'm beginning to feel, oh, this is really going wrong. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I should be believing that Jesus is with us, but it didn't feel like it. Um, and the third call said, um, I got through to someone else, oh, we'll talk it out in 24 hours. Uh, we'll send you an email in 24 hours' time. And I left it at that. Um, and uh, 24 hours later, nothing had came from them. They gave us the phone number, which didn't work, to ring American Airlines. And uh, uh, I think, well... It doesn't feel like Jesus is with us with this whole plan. Um, and even then I was thinking, well, I've got to preach about this on the Sunday after Easter as well. Um, Jesus saying, I'll be with you always. Um, and as I thought, I've been thinking about this, of course, for the last few weeks. There are lots of places in the Bible where Jesus, God says, I will be with you. I will be with you. Um, sometimes it's when He's given someone a very difficult job to do. Um, Moses was given the task to take the people of Israel out of Egypt where they were slaves. And he doesn't feel at all confident. Who am I to do that, he says. And God says, I will be with you. Are you sitting here today thinking, well, God's given me a job to do, and that's really difficult. Um, and he says, I'll be with you, I promise you, I will be with you. They do talk to him about it. God called Jeremiah to be a prophet. And Jeremiah said, I don't know how to speak, I'm only a child. And God says, I'll tell you what to say, I will be with you. I will rescue you. And sometimes we feel very young for a job God's given us to do. I remember feeling that very much um, when I first got ordained. Maybe you feel you're not qualified for what you are doing. God says, I will be with you. And what about when things really go wrong? You're ill, as some of you have been recently, or you've lost someone you love. Um, there's more promises from Isaiah. This is what the Lord says. He who created you, he who formed you, do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you pass through rivers, I will, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. That says God has called each of you by name. Now, if you read the uh, old versions of the Bible, it says it talks to you in the first person singular, which means it says thee, I've called thee by name. Um, so think of your name, uh, James, John, Lucy, uh, Stephen, Jane, um, Jenny. I've called you by name, you individually. God thinks of us individually. He thinks of us by name. I have called thee by name. Fear not, I have redeemed thee. Thou art mine. And it's to each of us personally this promise is made. We used to sing that verse in the authorised version when I worked in India. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much and remember it. God says, I will be with you. And because of these promises, King David, when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, could say, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because you are with me. The, the challenge today is to believe that. 
and to hold on to the promise when it feels difficult to do so. And in that we remember to take courage, encouragement from the story of Joseph, whose older brothers hated him so much that they sold him as a slave to be taken away from the family and to be led shackled to Egypt, to a land he didn't know, to people he didn't know, a language he didn't understand, and sold as a stranger in a marketplace. What does the Bible say? It says, the Lord was with him. And so you remember how he was taken on and worked in the home of Potiphar, uh, one of the uh, officials to Pharaoh. Things went well for a little while, and then he was falsely accused of attacking Potiphar's wife and put in prison and forgotten. How did he feel? Probably abandoned, but the Bible says God was with him, and things got better after that. So what about us, you and me? Can we trust him when things are difficult? And perhaps two questions as I come to an end. Jesus is walking beside you. Do you talk to him? Do you tell him everything? And will you walk with him all the days of your life? At the end of this service, at communion service, there's always that prayer which we commend, commit ourselves to be living sacrifices to, to walk with him. Maybe the second question to ask is that, is there someone you could walk alongside? Someone who you could be Jesus to, encouraging and helping, comforting, just as Jesus did on that Emmaus Road. One of the books, I love reading people's biographies, and uh, this is the book um, about Shackleton, and his team who went to the Antarctic and their boat was shipwrecked, as you may have seen recently. They found it recently under, under the sea um, in Antarctic. And he and his men trekked across the ice, eventually setting up a camp, and three of them set off in a boat, the most epic journey, a tiny boat, to Elephant Island. And then they got there and they had to trek across some mountains and snow that nobody else has managed to do since then, about a hundred years ago. And they said, we had a strange feeling that there were four of us, not three, on that last trek. As they got there safely, and all their men were rescued. And as for me and Cathy, well, we just drove to Heathrow on the 30th of March, got there at five o'clock in the morning, and a kind lady sorted us all out with a program to fly to where we needed to go and God was gracious and I needn't have worried at all um, but let's pray we can hold on to that lovely truth the story of the Emmaus Road let's pray